Hey, hi, Hari Krishna. How are you? Yeah, yeah, good, good. How are you? Thanks. Fine, Hari. I'm Hari. Thank you for asking. So anyway, so we'll get uh, started. So I got your profile from HR. I gone through okay. your, uh, good exposure with the AWSs, right? So that's fine. Yeah. So yeah, let's get started. Can you please tell me about yourself? Yes, fine. So um, I'm working in that uh, one of the company for any technology as a DevOps engineer. So um, I have that. Uh, Two, three client pro projects is going on that so i'm in that uh, especially working on the aws services so uh, mostly like uh, ec tools lambda and then vpc uh, cloud cloud front and and then uh, route 53 so uh, major things um, i'm looking into that uh, like the server deployments and then monitoring and then uh, we update that like uh, based on that client requirement the services exposed and then to the BOC and then show that uh, output of that project. So uh, that uh, main things is like uh, that uh, our day-to-day -day activities, I'm going to uh, just uh, do that the deployment in that Lambda services. Uh, so that is a project is called as a Roadrunner. So uh, that project is uh, going to, it's an easy commerce project. So we're going to front end code will be deployed through the React. So uh, also that uh, I'm, um, better knowledge in that S3 as well. So storage purpose, uh, code deployment purpose, I'm working on that at Hari. So uh, that's the things uh, uh, high level for my uh, in the current project as well. Okay, fine. Thank you for your input. So it gives me uh, idea and clarity about your current project. So can you tell me uh, what are the uh, work you will receive uh, on EC2 service? on f3 service from that i can ask you some questions yes uh, that ec2 instance uh, people is asking mostly for that uh, linux service going to deployment like jenkins uh, uh, ser servers are uh, going to install and then web applications and then um, if you want to so people's going to that uh, uh work on that any poc for the new project we need to set up that project like uh, uh install it on uh, micro machines and then uh, set up that uh, require packages in the linux server and then give it to team so team will be uh, take care of the things so okay. yeah s3 point of view uh yeah uh, some people are asking that uh put the some files in that public accessible so we can uh make to create that some bucket and then share, share the endpoint to them to they're going to access that uh bucket to the publicly to put the files okay fine fine all right so fine under ec2 can you please uh, differentiate what is the difference between uh private ip uh what is public ip what is elastic ip yes um <clears throat> Uh, actually, that uh, private IP is, is considered as a, uh, a local network. They are going to uh, each and every device should be have their own unique IP for the private IP, uh, so that they, they can able to accessible uh, in that uh, internal network. Uh, so that uh, they could not able to access the outside the, uh, publicly would not able to access it similarly. So uh, that is called the private IP. So that uh, public IP, uh, public IP is like. Uh, it's like uh, it's an ISP will be provided to uh, the particular instance, so that uh, that IP address is the worldwide is is a, at the time either one IP should be allocated to uh, any one de one devices, so that IP can able to access the, using that IP we can able to access that machine my uh, many ports uh, many many services like uh, Apache MySQL to expose that publicly accessible uh, so that the public ap uh, that elastic ap similar like that uh, public ap but that uh, the difference is like uh, elastic ap should be the constant that is a static ap address but the public ap is, is a dynamic ap address it will be keep change while you restart the system or stop and start the system um, that will be keep change okay fine uh, thanks for your input that's really appreciable so can you tell me in your environment in which are those instances you will consider for private a subnet oriented uh, environment which are those servers you are uh, considering for public subnet oriented environment where you will use private subnet where you will use public subnet can you say some uh, scenario based example yeah uh, okay uh, so uh, 
consider as a uh, we have uh, we have hosting the some uh, e-commerce website so uh, is e-commerce with the basic functionalities like uh, we have that uh, three different services one for that uh, front end servers then back end servers and then db servers so uh, uh, <clears throat> as per the my working experience uh, what we did it like uh, we, we have that uh, front end server using that apache and then nginx so uh, that that is called a web servers so web server we can able to uh, we need to expose to that publicly accessible then back end server uh, we using like uh, wordpress uh, so, uh, sorry uh, not wordpress is like atg uh, atg server is one of the back end server uh, and that uh, that server will be connected to the web servers uh, internally that no need to expose that outside access uh, then uh, at server and then db server is also like a, uh, uh, should be that that uh, private vpc why because uh, uh, all uh, customer details product details or uh, payment detail everything should be in that uh, db so that uh, is as a sensitive information should be there so that uh, uh, for the security concerns uh, we don't want to like expose that uh, backend server and then db server to the uh, publicly so that those services are should be in that private uh, VPC. Only that uh, which is the front end server, the web server should be exposed in the publicly to access the servers. So the back end uh, web servers and then the, the DB server and then uh, back end server will be connected in, in the private with the web servers, not for the publicly accessible. Okay, fine. Thank you. So that's good. So can you tell me like what is your understanding about AWS load balancers and uh, which scenario you will go for uh, which load balancer and tell me which is the most, uh, you know, uh, flexible and uh, advantage uh, load balancers available in AWS load balancers. Okay. So I was uh, working that like uh, mostly for that uh, <clears throat> obligation load balancer. Uh, so obligation load balancer we can able to uh, as per my understanding i can able we can able to uh, create that multiple uh, multiple uh, ro rules for that uh, based on that like um, uh, redirection so uh, the classic load balancer also on, on type of load balancer but uh, application load balancer uh, we can able to uh, uh, SSH, uh, so SSL uh, redirection, like HTTP to HTTPS, and then uh, multiple dark code groups that have application-wise service-based health check we can able to check. Uh, so, uh, and the rules we can able to, based on our requirement, uh, which, for example, uh, if you have uh, like www.abc.com slash page one, we, uh, we can able to the particular instance using the some target group so uh, slash page two should do other particular instance. we can that type of conditions we can able to easily create in that application load balancer so uh, application uh, load balancer is a best convenient and the more advantages compared to the classical load balancer classical load balancer also we have that uh, uh, things like that that uh, rules and all is not much uh, no, we're not using that uh, that type of options in that uh, as per my understanding, that not available in the classical load balancer. Very good, excellent. Can you please explain me the structure of VPC, how it's there in your environment with the peering? Okay, uh, so uh, that uh, VPC is, uh, is basically for that to create the, some um, uh, private network uh, in our uh, setup. So uh, initially that uh, we, what we do that like we are, uh, VPC should be created. Uh, first, we create that some VPC with the CADR range. So under that, we're going to create that as subnets. So uh, best practice, a minimum two availability zone is uh, uh, better things for that high availability. So that what we're going to create that two subnet for that. And then the subnet should be uh, mapped into that subnet association, the route table with the internet gateway. Uh, so uh, pairing connections, uh, uh, this is a uh, things that we're going to create. Uh, if you have that private subnet uh, and then public subnet, uh, that public subnet should be like uh, the router also uh, 
round table associ subnet associations um, we need to map in that internet gateway but the private subnet if you're going to use um, so uh, nat gateway should be mapped in, in that uh, subnet association the nat gateway should be uh, is a one one level of network layer uh, security purpose uh, so map in the private gateway uh, so <clears throat> That gateway, that main main things should be only we, we require for that one public subnet and then elastic IP we need to require. Uh, so uh, that VPC peering, uh, VPC peering and the concept for that communicate between that multiple uh, subnets. Um, so my, sorry, multiple VPC. Uh, so it can be that uh, same account, AWS account, or it can able to connect between different AWS account to communicate between that um, one VPC to another VPC. Okay, perfect. So could you tell me the difference between uh, internet gateway and NAT gateway? Which scenario in live project people are using internet gateway and what are all the scenario people will be using NAT gateway? Okay, uh, uh, internet, uh, uh, internet gateway will be uh, mostly uh, we using that uh, public sub, uh, public subnet uh, which is the publicly accessible uh, which I told that before that uh, web servers so th that will be normally for the access of the public so that uh, internet gateway will use that public servers NAT gateway uh, which is useful for that uh, backend servers um, it's like a DB servers uh, and then uh, backend uh, servers uh, what are the things you're going to not uh, uh, specifically allowed to the access of publicly. So those services will be integrated with that uh, NAT servers and uh, sorry, uh, NAT gateway. Okay, fine. NAT gateway will be specially for that private uh, VPC. Okay, okay, fine. Is it possible like when I'm having a two AWS account, okay, I'm having my AWS account that is production. Uh, there is another AWS account called Sandbox. Okay, I have one VPC in production account. There are one more another VPC in Sandbox account. Okay, so is it possible to make a pairing between these two different account, two different VPC? Yes, uh, through the VPC pair, we can, they have an option for uh, uh, some. We need to provide some account ID, uh, sandbox, uh, sandbox uh, ID to the production or production ID to sandbox. We can able to expose that connection between the, those account. All right, fine. So coming to uh, you know, uh, we have done with you know uh, EC two VPCs. Uh, could you tell me more about auto scaling in which scenario you will go for creating auto scaling and tell me how you have specified auto scaling on your current setup okay so uh, <clears throat> that uh, auto scaling is a mostly for that uh, so uh, that uh, service reduces the price cost for that uh, as per that client um, so uh, uh, and then also we have a high availability. We can use that auto scaling. Um, so uh, mostly that uh, horizontal uh, yeah, and the most for the, the vertical auto scaling will be that um, uh, uh, vertical auto scaling uh, in, is is a uh, on premises environment. There's like a hardware changes. Uh, upgrade that hardware configure that and all is a vertical level auto scaling that horizontal scaling is the um, uh, most trending auto scaling method so uh, so that auto scaling uh, what will happen if example uh, we are using that web server so the web servers uh, like example that is cpu load at more than 80 percentage so uh, how many instances should be the up so uh, that in uh, on that time, uh, in the, we don't know that. So, for example, if a, if a e commerce website is mostly like some seasons, like a, uh, holiday seasons or some uh, festival seasons, on that time, the traffic will be more. On that time uh, alone, we require that some, and that uh, resources should be more, more. So, on that time alone, we need to require that uh, instances. Uh, so, we don't know that uh, when the traffic will become, when the traffic will be reduced. So, we could not manually manage that. So, uh, uh, the uh, auto scaling will be uh, overcome that issues so uh, if you consider that auto scaling so based on the traffic that in um, the server config server will be up and down and based on the real traffic so that the price also will be reduced uh, from the client side as well okay okay so in your environment uh, how many aws accounts are there how you are managing your production account how you are managing your sandbox account and uat account so is there any centralized way uh, aws is offering to manage multiple aws account and how you are categorizing your billing and all? 
yes uh, 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 we have that like on a root account uh, so on that account under that we create that uh, multiple or uh, they have options or the aws provide for the organization structures so uh, we can uh, create that based on that project uh, based on that environment we can create the multiple uh, a number of AWS account and under that the root account so that we can able to easily track uh, based on the project, based on the environment. We can able to billing ways and then uh, environment ways we can able to easily track that one of the service called organization standards. Okay, okay, fine. That's good. So then do you have any SCP policies in your organization uh, to manage your account centrally? Uh, no hurry. Yeah, we don't have any SAP policies. Okay. Okay. Fine. Then. All right. The main so, focus uh, we do. Uh -huh. the, uh, yeah. The main focus uh, we created uh, multiple uh, account for uh, different project and then buildings uh, so that we need to segregate the building purpose. We specially use that or that method. Okay. 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 How about your IAM architecture? Uh, how your authentication takes place? Do you have Do you have any specific group? And how you are uh, group has been hierarchy in IEM? Uh, we created uh, mostly for the two different group, uh, three different groups. Sorry, uh, one for the monitoring purpose, another one for user group uh, for the development, their one for the DevOps. So uh, based on that uh, user uh, required for services, the project required services, we give the, allow that to rewrite and more and uh, access. So uh, every user should be have their MFA should be enabled through that uh, app, some Google authentication or something, authenticate some using that SaaS, that uh, mobile app, uh, we auth authorize that uh, MFA for that every users. And then um, we given that uh, only uh, monitoring and the develop team should be have allowed to access uh, AWS CLA. Uh, monitoring, normally we do not use that AWS CLA. Uh, we restricted that access as well. Okay, okay. So basically, uh, what I understood from our discussion, you have a good knowledge on IAM architecture and EC2, in and out, I think you worked. And uh, VPC also, you have a strong knowledge on the networking areas. Load balance or auto scaling, you worked. That's is what correct. In addition to that, do you have any exposure in, across AWS? Um, no, no hurry. Uh, 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 I, I'm looking into that like. Uh, apart from that, AWS uh, planning to that uh, DevOps. Okay, so yeah. once the certification will be done, next to move on to the DevOps level. Next okay, 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 fine then. All right, uh, fine. Thank you for your time. Okay, it was nice talking to you. I'll update the feedback to HR. Okay, he will revert you. All right. Thank you then. Yeah, thank you. So, yeah, bye -bye. Thank you so much. Guys. Bye.